Hello. So I'm um, coming on today um, to share a story and um, encouragement um, about the Lord working in our lives and how to recognize him and how to be in tune with him and to be looking for him. So let me pray really quick and then I'll get to that. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for um, speaking to my heart, Lord. And um, thank you for always getting these videos to the people who need to hear them, to the people that you're ministering to. Um, through this YouTube channel, Lord, um, I just pray that uh, your word would go forth, Lord, and that this video would make it to anyone and everyone who needs to hear this, God. And thank you so much for your supernatural power and the way that you work, um, that you give me a message and it goes out, Lord, and it can talk to 15 people in completely different ways. I thank you that you work in that way, Lord. You are an awesome father. And I'm excited for the work that you're doing, Lord. I just pray that this video would bring glory to you, Lord. Um, that you would keep people free of distraction, Lord. That you would guard people's minds to hear your word, Lord. And to not let the enemy of their soul um, feed them any lies that would turn them against your truth, Lord. And that we cast down anything that would um, raise itself up against the knowledge and the truth that you want to bring through this video. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So um, here is my story. Um, I, ha I was um, had a volunteer opportunity last week. And um, so we're new to the area. Well, new were, I guess we're not completely new, but um, and newer to the area and getting plugged in with some um, local places. And I had a volunteer opportunity um, and it was at a place um, yeah, where I don't really know the people very well. They don't know a lot about me. I was supposed to volunteer that morning and, um, on the way there, or sorry, before even leaving the house while we were getting ready, our power went out. Um, and so, um, we finished getting ready and, you know, we were going to be a little bit late because of that, but that didn't stop us from going. So we're getting ready. However, when we run out the garage to leave the house, I realize that my garage door was open and I thought, hmm, maybe the power came back on. And so um, we tried shutting it and it didn't shut. And we realized when my husband had left a little while earlier, he left the garage door open knowing that we would be leaving shortly and we would close it on our way out. Well, now it was stuck open and I couldn't close it. And so, um, my husband and I having different ideas, I'm thinking, okay, it'll be fine. Like, you know, it's fine. But my husband's thinking was, and I think his thinking was right, <laughs> was no, that's not safe. That just leaves our home vulnerable. You know, we need to make sure that it's closed um, if I'm going to be gone that long all day. And so I was really bummed, but I wasn't going to be able to keep my volunteer obligation. I needed to keep my home safe and um, I need to respect my husband's wishes, even though at that time I wasn't quite in agreement. Um, I came to agreement shortly thereafter um, to see that his way was wiser than my way. Anyway, so I had to run and leave the house really quick and drop off my son, but then I had to come right home. So on my way home, I grabbed a coffee because I was like, I'm going to be home and I don't know how long the power is going to be out. It was dreary weather. I'm going to be sitting at the dark in the dark. And I knew I was going to be bummed because I was looking forward to being helpful. I, I love volunteering and I wanted to also get to know the people. And so grab myself a coffee, come home. Um, you know, I had, I had to tell the people I'm not gonna be able to volunteer. I'm so sorry. And I was also feeling down because I looked like a flake. These people don't really know a lot about me. And so my first chance to volunteer, you know, um, I, this happened and, um, you know, for all they know, I could have been lying and like making up the whole thing. So I was like bummed too, because of, I guess what my image was looking like to these people and they didn't know anything of my character yet. Now, if they had known me, they would know that I wasn't a liar and that I told the truth and they would know that, but they didn't. So anyways, that was another piece of the puzzle. So I come home, um, got my coffee in hand and I come into the house and I, um, I come in, I'm bummed and I walk in and I, I go in the house and then I'm like, you know what? I didn't even, I didn't even, um, go and pray and, um, you know, um, try and bring, you know, ask the Lord to intervene, try and bring the things under the authority that the Lord's given me. So I go out into the garage, 
um, and I pray like, Lord, you know, I really want to go do this volunteer opportunity. Um, if there's any way that you would make this work out, would you please help the garage door to close um, so that I could go and do this? Um, you know, if not, if I understand because I know I'm at the place where I know God's will is best and I don't try and fight him on things like I, I know and I trust him. And it doesn't mean that sometimes I'm not disappointed, um, but I trust him. So, you know, Lord, your will be done. Um, I wait for a minute. Nothing happens. So then I'm like, okay, well, I have authority in Christ. Um, so I'm going to try and use that authority with the garage door. So I'm like, okay, garage door close in Jesus name. Um, electricity work and close in Jesus name. I wait, see if it's going to come under that authority. Nothing happens. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, okay, I trust you, Lord. Take off my shoes, go into the house, sit at the kitchen table to enjoy my coffee alone in the dark, <laughs> a bit disappointed, but I'm like, okay, God has other plans, you know? So I sit down and it couldn't have been two minutes. And all of a sudden, the electricity flashes on and I jump out of my chair there at the kitchen table and I run down the hallway and I, I was running so fast that when I stopped, came to a stop to go open the door and go around the corner to the garage door, I actually slid, boom, I hit the button, the garage closes. And before it closes all the way though, there was probably about this much open at the bottom. It, it went out, all the power went out again. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I think that's enough. <laughs> so I, I was like, Lord, thank you. And I just start laughing. I'm laughing out loud because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. The Lord answered my prayer. The garage door closed. Um, the garage door worked. The electricity came back on. And it was so funny too because it was such a quick flash. And um, I wasted no time. I did not hesitate ran out there. So I sent a picture to my husband and I was like, is this closed enough? Can I go? He's like, go, go. And so, um, I jumped in my car and I was just, so I was like on top of the world because I had already given up like, okay, my will's not going to be done. You know, the Lord has a different plan and sitting there waiting, but still hopeful. Like, you know, the Lord could still do something. Maybe he will. And then as soon as he did, boom, you know, I didn't waste a second. And so, um, I actually, when I was driving down, um, when I was leaving my house, one of my neighbors, they have an electric fence. And so I actually saw at the time when I was messing with my garage, I saw her over at her house stuck behind the electric fence and her power was out too. So she obviously couldn't get it opened. So then, you know, she's at her fence. I'm at my garage, go inside my little, um, um, my little, God intervention um, miracle happened. And so I'm loading back into my car and I see her um, sitting at her gate and I'm driving away and she's still sitting there and she can't get out. And I'm like, man, I wish I had her cell phone number because I know they're believers too. And I would have sent her a text, pray, did you pray yet? Did you pray? And um, anyway, so I just laughed and I started, then I was like, wow, I need to praise the Lord for this. This is so cool. And um, so I just started busted out like singing worship songs and laughing. I probably look like a crazy lady in my car all the way there. And um, I arrived and uh, there are people there who I knew were believers as well. So I was like, oh my gosh, you guys have to hear what happened. This is so cool. And I could show them the picture of like, you know, the little part of the garage that was still open that the Lord gave me just enough what I needed to come down. And um, so the point of sharing this with you guys is... Um, that um, number one is, well, there's a couple points, but number one is that God is alive and active in our lives every day. And um, he works in so many different ways and you have to be looking for him. Um, you have to be looking for what he's doing in order to spot him and not just walking around, you know, um, just focused on everything of this world and and forgetting that he really does care about the details of our lives and he really is involved. And when we're walking with him, we're to be in an intimate relationship with him. And um, so number one is be looking for him, be looking for the ways that he is working on your behalf. Um, you know, when I went into the garage and I prayed over the door and then I was talking to the door and just saying, hey, door, you know, you're under the authority of the Lord, close in Jesus name. And I was doing those two things. So 
I was expecting right then, you know, just for the door to close. Um, it didn't happen that way. But as you can see with my story, the Lord still made it happen, even though it happened in a different way than I expected. So another point of this is um, we come to the Lord expectantly. The word tells us to come to the Lord expectantly, but be flexible in your expectations because a lot of times what he does comes about in a different way than what we were expecting. And it doesn't mean that it's not him. You know, somebody who um, doesn't have a deep faith in the Lord could listen to that and be like, well, that's just a coincidence. You know, that happens all the time. Electricity, you know, it, it was out and then, you know, maybe they were working on it and there was um, a split second where it came on and, you know, well, when you know the Lord, you know that he works through those things. And so, um, regardless of whether the Lord supernaturally turned on that power, um, or if they're, you know, if he, um, worked through somebody who was working on the power to give me a little spurt of energy, I don't care how it worked. All I know is that there was a problem. Um, I brought it to the Lord and the Lord worked it out. I don't need to know all the details. I just was excited and built my faith so much because he is interested in those details. So then the other thing is, you know, with other relationships, so I was reminded about my dog, um, about this message. I was in the kitchen and um, I have a little dog and she's not the best um, about notifying us if she needs to go out to the bathroom to go outside. So we have to keep a constant watch and be tuned into her um, body language and what she does to know if she needs to go out because obviously we don't want her to have an accident in the house but her body language can be very subtle so we have to keep a constant eye on her and um, see how you know if she's trying to get our attention or if she goes and stands at the door different things um, to see what her needs are see what she's trying to tell us and um through that, I was reminded that it's the same if our human relationships, especially as parents, we need to be in tune with our kids um, to know what's going on, to know their needs, to know what they're saying to us, you know, um, in our marriage relationships too. And also to see like when things happen, sometimes what we're seeing on the surface level, there's more going on that if we're not in tune with that person, with that relationship, we could miss that. Um, so it's the same with the Lord. Um, you know, he made us for relationship with him first and foremost, but he also made us for relationship with other people. So a lot of the principles that we see in our human relationships, those can also be relatable to the Lord, obviously on a, uh, you know, higher, more magnificent holy level um, but they are shadows of what our relationship is like with the lord and so just the way if you have a hard time thinking about like being in tune with the lord look at your relationships with your pets with your kids with your spouses you know with co-workers like we need to be in tune with what's going on in order to take you know we get a lot of cues from body language um, sometimes if somebody is acting a certain way and emotions are showing, you know, there's something deeper going on. And so, um, just in the same way that we need to be in tune to those relationships, it's the same way with the Lord. So being in tune to him. And so looking for him throughout our day, not just doing our things and then being like, well, if the Lord wants to tell me something, he will. Well, that's totally true. But a lot of times we miss that because we're not looking for it. We're not tuned in. So tuning into him and um, the best way to do that, um, you know, to get started is reading your Bible um, because you get to know, you get to see what he does in all of these different um, circumstances throughout the Bible. You get to see, you know, when this person was um, in a hardship, how did the Lord treat them? How did the Lord provide for them? How did he take care of them? Wow, what made what hurt the Lord's heart, what this person did, you know, and put a break in their relationship because we can hurt the Lord's heart. And, you know, um, I hate to say hurt his feelings because that kind of makes it sound like he has 
human feelings because we get our feelings hurt for, you know, trivial things. And the Lord does not, but we can grieve his spirit, which in human terms kind of seems equivalent on a human level to hurting feelings, you know, hurting his heart. And so you can read through here and see, wow, when this person did so-and-so or such-and-such, you know, that hurt God. And, and how, um, how do you, how do you come back from something like that? If you hurt God or, you know, how does God want us to respond? And so all of these, um, accounts throughout the Bible, they really help us to get to know God, but don't stop there because God is alive and well, and his spirit is alive and well. And so, um, maybe you've been taught this, that God only speaks through his word, but God doesn't only speak through his word. His Holy Spirit is alive and well. And when you come to him, when you give your life to him, when you repent of sin, when you ask forgiveness for your sin and you say, Lord, please put your spirit inside of me, he does. So you have God's living spirit inside of you. And so now he is speaking to you from within. So doesn't mean that you want to set this aside and be like, okay, God's spirit is in me. Now I don't need my Bible. No, you need your Bible because this is the measuring stick. When you, when you get promptings from the Lord, you need to make sure that it matches the Bible and make sure that it really is something from the Lord, because we can get confused, um, um, about hearing from the Lord. And it's a learning curve. It's a learning process to learn to divide out the things that you hear and feel and discern between, um, cause you have all these different messages that can come to you. They can come from yourself. They can come from the Lord. They can come from the enemy. So as you are immersing yourself here, you're getting to know the Lord and you're getting to know his heart and his ways so that when you are hearing his promptings, you can recognize and check it against the word and know, yes, that is from God. Or if there is a lying spirit that is trying to get you to do something, um, you can or eat or your own flesh, you can measure that against her. If it doesn't line up with the word, then it's not coming from God. And so then you get to know the differences and how these, um, um, spirits, entities, your own flesh, you get to know how they're, the, how they're different so that you can discern, okay, this is God leading me to do something. Okay. That's the enemy telling me a lie and trying to stir up problems. Okay. That's my flesh. That's trying to rise up and take over the situation. I'm going to push the flesh down and I'm going to give that thought over to God. And I'm going to call on God to help me to operate in his spirit and in my born again spirit. And so um, but the Lord will teach you that as you go and you'll get better at it over time. Um, so um, hearing hearing from him and being in tune with him and having that relationship with him, um, it is, you know, you can take clues and um, promptings from the same things that we need in our human relationships, the same ways that we need to get to know each other, that we need to listen to one another, um, that we need to you know, if, if something becomes broken or, um, yeah, like a break in the relationship or something happens, you know, from our sin or something like we can fix that with the Lord. He makes that possible. And so that was the other thing, um, about this is, um, is learning to be in tune and knowing that because some people just think that, you know, you, you, sometimes you, put some time in reading your Bible and then you go along your life and that's being a Christ follower, but it's, that's not, there's so much more to it. It really is a relationship with the Lord. And if you, um, the, the different ways, I know I talk about these throughout different videos, but the different ways that you're hearing from the Lord is not usually the way that we read of people in the old Testament hearing from the Lord. And, um, I believe that that is because when he was speaking to them, his spirit was not indwelled in them. So it was a different way that he communicated with them then versus when his spirit is inside of us. It's a much quieter, softer, more gentle way of communicating with us now. And so um, a lot of times, like I, I'll look back in my life and 
you know, things that I'll go over with the Lord. And I'm like, oh, wow, that was actually the Lord speaking to me when at the time I thought it was my own thought, but I can do the same thing with thoughts from the enemy. Like, um, you know, I can look back at uh, different things and things actually um, a lot of things that would come to me over and over and over again these lies that I thought were my own thoughts um, uh, as a young girl as a young adult um, and then later on I realized wow that was actually the voice of the enemy who was just feeding me these lies over and over again to get me to believe that they were true and to think that they were my own thoughts because he doesn't come in and announce himself and you know, because then you wouldn't listen to what he said. So he's very subtle. So it's a learning curve, a learning process. But um, anyway, so being in tune with the Lord and um, just knowing that he takes part in so many things in our lives. And um, it's exciting. Um, I know I probably, I was so excited when I got there. And um, anyway, so this is a kind of a small thing, um, you know, getting to go to a volunteer thing and um, closing my garage. It's, there's much more important things in the world, but so you can take these same principles and apply them to bigger things in your life, more important things, deeper things, but still, it's still a part of faith and it's still the Lord thought that that was important enough and he intervened. And so I wanted to remind you too, is be looking for those things and be ready. So if I hadn't been, I've come to this place, it's not perfected. I'm still learning, but I am definitely, um, getting in a much better groove of walking in a place of always looking for the Lord. Where is the Lord at work? Where is he today? What is he doing? How is he helping me? You know, how, what does he want me to do? Um, that sort of thing. And that can, that can be something like, um, being ready and being just ready to go when he says go, being ready to move when he says move. And that can look like me sitting at the table and just being like, okay, it's kind of pondering like, okay, God has something else mind I wonder you know what but then as soon as he flashed on that electricity and I was like boom and I was ready to go and so it can manifest in that way just be ready to go if I had hesitated you know he gave me that opportunity and if I had hesitated I would have missed out you know and I'm sure there are other things going on behind the scenes in allowing me to go volunteer that I'm not even aware of you know like I always say like it's so cool because it that was working on my behalf. That was the desire of my heart. But I know that there were other things in play on behalf of other people and more importantly, on behalf of the kingdom of God. And so there are other things going on why God worked that out. But I could have missed that. And it's the same thing with bigger opportunities. It can also manifest being ready and to see where God is and what he's doing and what he wants you to do. That's the that's the other part is... Um, I could have in the garage when I prayed and when I was telling the garage to work under the authority of the Lord, well, the Lord could have just closed the garage, you know, with all the power off. Um, for some reason, he didn't. I had a part in it. There was something I had to do to receive that work of the Lord. Okay, so I went and when he said go, I went and I was ready, but I had a part in it. So the other encouragement is, a lot of times we have a part in it. And so, um, you know, uh, it could also look like, you know, I'm kind of going two different ways right here. Okay. So, um, the other thing was I, ha I heard this analogy the other day and I'm probably going to botch it a little bit, but I think the general idea will get to you. Um, it was a person and they, um, were in a perilous situation and, um, they, they needed the Lord to come rescue them and they needed to, be rescued from this place so they went up to this really high place to get away from the danger and they were waiting up there praying lord come help me come rescue me i need you to come rescue me and help me and um so that person was waiting for the lord to rescue them to send them help to come help them well they had an idea in their head what that would look like well um a plane came in um to rescue this person and they said no no I'm trusting God I'm not going to get on the plane because I'm trusting God to rescue me the plane tries to get him on there um or the person I guess it wasn't him in the story on there um no I'm waiting for God I don't need your plane thank you I'm just going to wait for God to rescue me so the plane goes away a little while later someone comes on a boat and they're like here get on the boat we're here to rescue you we're here to help you no no I'm waiting on God God's going to rescue me I'm waiting on God I'm praying and I'm trusting that he's going to take care of me so they try and convince him to get on the boat. He won't. So he goes away. Well, the, the, um, the, whatever the perilous situation was ended up taking the person's life. 
And then the person was like, God, why didn't you save me? You know, talking to God about it. And God was like, I did. I sent you a plane. I sent you a boat, but you refused it. So you died. You know, your life ended. And that um, story totally went with this about um, being flexible in your expectations of how the Lord is going to intervene. Because this person was looking for something else, like maybe God to like beam him out of there or something. God sent rescue but it looked differently than what he was expecting and he pushed it away. And so that can happen and there can be devastating consequences. And so even though my consequences wouldn't have been like devastating, I would have missed out on that blessing that the Lord clearly brought to me. And um, so I, the other encouragement was about that is, um, you know, it doesn't always look how we think it's going to look. So be open, have your eyes wide open, looking for the ways that the Lord is working on your behalf and um leading you you know and the other way too is like you know if you're downtown it could look like always being ready to say lord do you have a mission for me you know maybe you're going somewhere and um there's somebody there and the lord points them out to you and says they really need prayer from you or they really you know go there and they're selling something at a store out at a, a booth in front of a store you know go over there and you're like huh you know, but you can, you know, it's of the Lord. Um, you're like, I think the Lord told me to just do that. Well, go over there and check it out. If you go over there the and the Lord has something for you, he's going to give you more direction. He's going to prompt you. And if not, then it's okay. At least you tried to hear from the Lord. And, um, and if it wasn't of him, then you're not going to have that direction, you know? And so, and the direction could be just like a feeling like, oh, I really feel like I need to do this. And that can be a prompt from the Lord, like a nudging in your heart, you know, and, and it's like sometimes one step at a time, like, you know, oh, go over there and look at that. And you're like, well, I don't want to buy anything over there. Oh, wait, uh, I think the Lord wants me to do this. You head over, you know, you talk to the person, you get a nudging, like you need to ask them, ask them this, like, why would I ask them that? Oh, okay. You ask them that. Well, you end up talking to the person, you end up ministering to them, you end up praying for them right there, you know, in the middle of the sidewalk, in the middle of public, people might be looking at you, the person might, um, it might be a really touching moment, you know, the person might come to know the Lord or come back to the Lord or, you know, the person might, you're praying there, they might become free of demonic strongholds, they might break down in tears. And all of that would have been missed if you didn't listen to the prompting of the Lord and if you weren't keeping your eyes wide open for what he was doing so that you could follow him into it. So this can look a lot of other ways too. Um, you know, looking for how he's ministering to you throughout the day. Does he send you um, ministry videos on YouTube? Does he send you an encouraging text from a friend? Does he um, put the perfect song that speaks into your situation on the radio, um, you know, in your Bible reading, is there, you know, is that Bible reading jumping out at you, um, speaking to you, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I've been praying for. And sometimes the temptation in all of these things that I've just shared is, um, oh, that's just a coincidence or, oh no, God doesn't work that way. Well, Push that aside because God works in so many ways that we're not even aware of. I don't even think that by the time we leave planet Earth um, that we're going to know all the ways that God was trying to get our attention, all the ways that he was speaking to us. And, you know, the enemy will try and tell you like, oh, that was just a coincidence. Sometimes even like I'll pick up my Bible and like, OK, Lord, where should I read today? You know, and I um, heard pastors who say don't do that. And I think. You know, you don't want your Bible reading to be like that all the time, but the Holy Spirit does lead us. And so I'm thinking, wow, maybe that person hasn't ever had a prompting from the Holy Spirit and they don't know that he does do that. So sometimes, yeah, the, like he'll, the Lord will lead you to a specific book. It's like not even the book that you've been reading and you open it up and you're like, whoa, and that's exactly what you needed to hear. It's exactly, you know, in line with um, what you're learning, what the Lord's been teaching you, what you've been praying for. It's an answer, you know, and you can always ask like, you know, can I have another confirmation, you know? And um, sometimes you get another confirmation and sometimes you get that you need to trust the Lord and move forward. That was your confirmation. And so also don't get stuck in the place where you're like, well, if that was really you, do this. And if it was really you, do this. Um, I think there are times when the Lord will 
do that and speak to us, but it can become a bad habit and it can become a, um, a blockage, um, a tripping stone in our faith. And it can actually become a way where we almost are testing God. Um, and it can kind of become a negative way. Not that we, we want to confirm that we're hearing from the Lord, but if we draw that out so much, we're going to miss the opportunity. A lot of them are timely, timely opportunities. And we need to learn also to trust that if we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, the, the Bible says that, um, that God's sheep hear his voice, that we know his voice. So at some point you need to trust that you can recognize the voice of God and don't listen to that voice of doubt, whether it's your flesh or whether it's the enemy who's trying to make you think that you don't hear from God. If you have his spirit inside of you and if you're spending time in his word, you are going to start hearing from him in his word and through the other places that I've talked about. Um, anyway, so that's just an encouraging story to remind you guys that God is communicating with us all the time and um that we can trust that we will recognize him and that he will speak to us in ways that we'll understand him it's it's i believe it's so different for all of us because we understand and we are all so unique we understand so differently we communicate in so many different ways but the lord will communicate to us personally and uniquely in those ways that he created us to understand him so you know your ways of communicating with the Lord, sometimes they're going to be similar to other people, but sometimes they're going to be so different. That doesn't mean that it's not of the Lord. It just means that you are unique and the Lord will speak to you in ways that you will understand. Um, you know, uh, um, gosh, I have more to share, but this video is longer than I wanted it to be. Anyway, so I'm going to um, pray. And then um, some people like to worship along with me on my videos with my songs. Some people... Um, don't really have people to fellowship with or they do but um, we have a special relationship so we and we miss getting to worship together so I'm going to pray us out so feel free to end the video but if you want to sing along with me or if you just enjoy worshiping the Lord then I stick around I'll do one maybe two songs um, so let me get a drink of water so Lord thank you for this time together and I just pray that you would be with each person who listen to this video, God, that you would touch them this week, Lord, that you would communicate with them, that you would give them faith and um, hope, Lord, and allow them to trust that you are with them and to trust that they can learn to hear your voice, that they can hear your voice. And I pray that if anyone's having a hard time spending time in your word, Lord, that you would help them to overcome that and that you would break anything of the enemy that would be coming against them and stopping them from spending that time in your word, Lord. Um, we thank you and we love you, Lord. We worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.